Hello, my name is Larry Cassell. I want to welcome you to my studio, the Baton Rouge Fine Arts Academy. And uh, I have had the privilege of being invited to uh, speak at our, uh, or more specifically to give a demo to our students in the Vacation Bible School. And it's my privilege here to be with you at the Mandeville Bible Church and to be able to present this to about 40 people in two different classes. That's why I thought the video would be the best way to do this. Now, this is another sample thing I did before I recorded, and uh, so I'm going to start, first of all, by saying I know many of you have never had or seen watercolor before, and I think you will be very interested for the first time. Uh, I love to do skies. And that's one of the main things I wanted to say about this particular painting. Uh, many times I wake up at uh, daybreak. And there's nothing I like better to do as we have a third story apartment above the trees. I love looking out uh, over the trees at daybreak. And within five minutes, many times, you can see so many uh, different forms take place in just a short time as you watch that sky unfold. And I always uh, feel that uh, it's like the, the brush of God in, in doing a painting. Every morning I look at it, it's so glorious and so majestic, and it really glorifies the Lord and his power and his might and what he is able to do and was able to do in creating the earth. And... Uh, so I'm going to be starting with the painting with the sky in it. And while I'm, I'm doing this, while I'm going starting it, first thing you have to do is mix a, uh, is, is wet the background very thoroughly. Now this is going to be a rather quick painting. We don't have a lot of time. So uh, without any further ado, I want to start. Now notice how we do this. I'm going to start now and I'm gonna take a lot of water and start covering the entire background and I'll do the entire paper wet on wet. Now, a little bit about my background. I was born in New Orleans, Louisiana in 1939. I graduated from the John McCready Art School in 1960. I was very fortunate shortly after that to be hired in the NASA space program where for 10 years, uh, along with 375,000 other men, committed people, we got together and honored President Kennedy and Dr. Wannabon Braun's wish to put on the moon, a man on the moon in 10 years. I went in at the beginning. My last assignment was actually Apollo 11 at Cape Kennedy, where I was an illustrator. I had to do revision drawings, but along the way, I got to do a lot of paintings of... Uh, the astronauts. I had a lot of wonderful experiences with everything that went on uh, during this period. So uh, it was a great experience and I'm very thankful for it. I was 21 years old when I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord of my life. And uh, I wanted to share that with you. I attended uh, a little church uh, called the Mid-City Baptist Church in New Orleans, Louisiana with my wife, Sybil. And uh, I heard the gospel for the first time and Pastor J. Paul Driscoll, after the altar call was given, I went up. I knew it was the Lord in it and uh, accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I'd been raised in church like many people. Now, you think I'm wasting time here, but I'm this has got to be real, real wet and stay wet. Uh, I, uh, like many of you all as a young person, I went to church, went to catechism every day. I was taught everything about Jesus, everything about the cross and all of these things. And I'm so thankful for the, the teaching and the upbringing. But unfortunately, no one ever told me that not only would I be able to have Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, but along with that, he would also be my friend. And it was a, so it is a wonderful experience to give your life to the Lord 
and many blessings are ahead for those that do. Now, coming along here, I will, uh, I think it's about wet enough to do what I want to do. Now, this is called a palette, and I think y'all can all see this now pretty well. And I'm going to take some pigment, and I'm going to mix the pigment in the palette. And I want to take a yellow known as, you know, color known as yellow ochre. Now I have, this is called hooker's green light, this is yellow ochre, this is ultramarine blue, and that's burn umber. Now I'm going to do a quick demo uh, of this for you. And uh, I wanna mix quite a bit of this, of this paint. And what you really do is you just get the paint to a certain consistency. And then I'll go back to my brush that I wet it down with, wet it again. Now I don't want a heavy sky up here but uh, I just want to cover the entire thing with the light coat of this yellow ochre. And uh, so we'll come in and handle it like this. Okay, now we'll bring it all down. I'm going to cover the whole paper with it. And uh, looks like I might have wet this a little too much, but it doesn't really matter. So we'll just come back like this now. And uh, just taking my solid color, covering everything very lightly. But uh, and normally what you do is, except for the fact that I did do this uh, a little bit uh, overly so with the water while I was talking with you, it's not going to hurt anything can't put too much water in watercolor. But I want to get enough pigment on to come across now and layer the first layer in. And we're going to do this. And then I'm going to come up from the bottom. And I think I'll probably have to add a little bit of yellow ochre, more yellow ochre to my palette. And uh, come back here like this now. And uh, there we go. Now this will fill it up a little bit better. Now normally what you do, you wet the paper thoroughly. I have it taped down because it's going to buckle a little bit, and uh, which is okay because uh, it'll thin out later. And uh, I'm just, you can see very roughly doing this. It doesn't really matter. Now we'll come down like this, go all the way across the bottom. Now that I've got a, enough water on it, I'll take a rag, wipe my brush off, and then I'm going to come across. Let's see, I've got a little excess water around the edges. I'm going to pick that up. And uh, okay. All right, now we'll bring it down like this. Bring it across. Keep lifting any excess off. Okay, now the next thing I'm gonna do, I have another color. And that is I have uh, ultramarine blue. And I'm gonna take that ultramarine blue and uh, I'm gonna mix it with my yellow ochre. And of course, yellow and blue are gonna make green. And I'm, it's a greenish color, more of a gray green. But I'm gonna come across like this now. And I'm gonna have some clouds coming in. And this is gonna be a rain scene, uh, almost like uh, what you would see right after a storm. And uh, okay, so let's, do this, get a little bit more, I think I'm about to get a little bit more of my uh, yellow ochre. Now I notice how it's running and doing all the different things that it's doing. This is typical. Okay, now I've got this up to a point where I'm gonna go ahead and get my large brush again for Tom's sake. And I'll come across like this. And I might let the top dry a little bit and get fresh paint but I'm um, just basically going to take it and drag it on down. OK. 
Okay, and some of this is a little thick up here. While it's wet, most people would be afraid to try something like this, or probably should be, but uh, it's really only a piece of paper and I never worry about things like that. So I've got my next level of clouds in now. Now, the next thing I'll do is get me uh, quite a bit more of my uh, ultramarine blue and my yellow oak. I think I have enough ultramarine blue. Let's get a little bit more yellow ochre now. And uh, now you, when you're doing this, you don't spare the paint. You uh, have to be prepared. Okay, now, it's going to run a lot, but that's what I'm expecting. And that's part of it, okay? So, uh, all right. Let's take the blue and the yellow. And basically, so you'll know what I'm doing, you just mix it like you would on the palette. And then I'll come back here and uh, we want to have a lot more blue in it this time. So I'll do this. And uh, now we're going to mix the heavy rain clouds just as they're breaking up. So we'll come in like this. And I'll put me another little area up here like this. And come back behind here. I'm so thankful that the Lord gave me this gift. Every gift you will ever receive in your life is going to be from the Lord. And uh, I've been so fortunate from the day, time I got out of art school to have been employed as an artist and eventually to open up my own art academy, which I did in 1973 and will soon be my 50th year operating the school. I've taught over 25,000 people and uh, it's been quite an experience. Now I'm just having fun playing around here just trying to illustrate all the different things you can do with this. Now I'm going to start coming down and giving us a uh, few little cloud formations here. Okay, Got a little green in there but that's not going to hurt anything. Okay now I want to bring my clouds down like this. Okay, and then we're going to do the next portion where I'll come under here. And, uh, okay, time wise, I'm about halfway through. So we're okay. Now, and I'll come in, I'll start doing a little bit of this kind of thing down here. I want it to look like stripes on a football field, so I'll connect it a little bit. Now this will dry a lot smoother than it looks right now. But basically, these are the types of clouds I wanted to get in this formation and begin to build up the layers. Now we're gonna stop with that. We're gonna go down to the bottom and I'm gonna take the hookers green. Light is what the color is called. And I'm gonna put a little burn umber with it. Now, we don't want to get too much of the green in there, but now I'm going to come up and just to give it a base, I'm going to have a few areas here where the, the green part of it is growing, coming up at the bottom. Now I may on this one go a little bit taller and actually make it darker. Okay. I hope everyone has been enjoying Vacation Bible School and uh, learning a lot about life and about the Lord Jesus and how Jesus loves us all. And uh, even the youngest child can understand that. Okay, now we'll go like this. All right, now we'll just go across the bottom. Uh, maybe do it like this here.
make sure I get this one a little bit higher. And then I want it, if I want to get it to a little darker, I'll put the burnt umber with it and the green and get some of the darker sections over here. But for now, let's just uh, pull this out like this. And I'm continually, okay, we're just 15 minutes into this, so a little bit ahead of time. Might not seem like it, but okay. Now I'm trying to really lay it in roughly like this where And you see how much you can really do in a hurry. And it just takes a lot of years to master this, but it's attainable for anyone that wants to do it. Okay, now, along the bottom now, the two colors you mix that'll give you a black, if you'd like, will be ultramarine blue and burnt umber. So I'm actually gonna take these colors now and I want to make this bottom area much darker to give it a base. Now, it's uh, hard to believe how many factors can enter into this uh, of uh, either the weather conditions or the water conditions can affect it tremendously. And so uh, I think this will all dry. It's just not quite as even as it usually would be. But... Uh, We'll put this base down here just to break up the monotony of it. Come up like this. Now you can do just about anything in watercolor that you can do with any other medium. A lot of people are afraid of it. But the main thing when you paint, if any of you ever want to pursue it to, for a hobby or whatever, and I stress this all the time at my school, as I mentioned, I've talked I've taught over 25,000 people. Most of them have, a lot of them, I should say, excuse me, have never, most of them have never pursued careers, but I have had some of my young people that have really uh, went to the right schools and worked very hard and were able, have been able to attain really wonderful careers in art. And uh, so I'm glad to have this opportunity to introduce it to you. And, uh, but, the basis of all painting is drawing. And I suggest if you ever follow through and take art yourself in school or anywhere, find something where you know how to draw. And I don't think if you, don't, can, can, if you can't draw it, you're not gonna be able to paint it. Now, this looks like kind of a hodgepodge right now, but uh, a lot of things you can do. And uh, I'm looking at, uh, we got about seven minutes left. So now as this dry, dries, it's really going away by itself, but I can take this brush now and I can begin to move a lot of this pigment around and smooth it out, but I'm really not that interested in it because I know it's gonna take care of itself. Now this is a little wet to do this. Uh, you, can, you can have a water, uh, a, uh, a hairdryer at your side while you're doing this. But uh, we'll come like this now. And uh, now, I wish I had a hairdryer here right now because uh, I'd like to do a few things on here. But uh, we'll show you the variety that you have now. I decided this thing needs a few birds. So we're gonna come in here. Now depending on how wet, okay, this is perfect. So I'll put me one here. And then let's put another one and see, so just make a little V and then break it, suggest it. And, uh, and we'll put maybe another one down here. You notice I'm not being too fancy. And uh, just enough to give it a center of interest and break it up a little bit more. Okay. Now, I think that uh, pretty well winds it up. And uh, we still have about, uh, 
let's see, about six or seven minutes. I've really enjoyed um, bringing this to you, and I'd like to stop now and perhaps answer any questions if you have any. But now notice where areas I might want it a little lighter while it's wet. You can come back and lighten it, see? And I wanted this bottom area down here real, real dark. And then some of these sections up here that were not smoothing out, drying out like I wanted to, I'll just come back and do this. It's very hard to, to come back while it's still wet because you have to really know what you're doing. But anyhow, I'm going to conclude it with this. Uh, I certainly do have, hope you have enjoyed it. It's been a real privilege to share this with you. Now, we'll go ahead and close this down, and uh, I'd like to leave some time to answer any questions you might have and so forth and so on, okay? Uh, thanks so much for giving me the opportunity to do this, and we'll close now.